Well, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> As you're aware, His Excellency the Governor today released the report on the police action at the House of Assembly on Friday, the 2nd of December 2016. The report was prepared by Assistant Chief Constable Christopher Sheed, who is attached to the National Police Coordination Centre, or NPOC, which is located in London. The report contains an independent assessment made by an experienced public order practitioner on the planning, command, and the tactics used by the police, along with 10 recommendations, recommendations that are to be considered. To start in terms of a summary of the events, the report establishes that the BPS adopted an overarching strategy to deal with the protests on the 2nd of December in a manner that sought to facilitate peaceful protest, protect the rights of others not involved in the protest, to prevent harm to people, and to prevent damage to property. From the outset, police advised protesters blocking the gates that they were committing offences and encouraged them to stop, continually reminding protesters and organisers that their actions must be lawful and they must not intrude on the rights of others. A designated liaison officer further attempted to negotiate an end to the protest with organisers and leaders. The report also acknowledges the BPS was faced with a set of circumstances that it was not experienced or adequately trained to deal with. The officers involved on the day showed resilience and they were fully committed to achieving a successful outcome according to the plan, but ultimately the BPS was not tactically prepared for the scale and the nature of the protest. The officers encountered some protesters that were clearly intent on causing disruption and the police may have over relied on their experience with previously compliant protests at the House of Assembly. Consequently, the BPS was not able to achieve many of the planned strategic objectives and the police were left to consider three options. Option one, do nothing, abandon the House of Assembly debate and take no further action. Option two, use a bubble tactic to get through the crowd and to gain access to the house, or option three, utilize the police support unit or the PSU with full protective equipment and shields. The use of full shield tactics was quickly recognized as a disproportionate response to the level of criminal behavior and this option was not selected. The do nothing option was deemed to be inappropriate given the three previous experiences at the House of Assembly where protesters obstructed successive sittings. The bubble tactic, therefore, emerged as a reasonable alternative to achieve the strategic intent of gaining access to the House of Assembly. This tactic, however, was not effective, given the numbers of protesters, their non-compliant posture, and the limited number of BPS resources. The protesters' response became more aggressive, and some actively resisted, prompting some officers to deploy incapacitant spray where they felt threatened by the actions of individual protesters. This led to a further deterioration in police and protester relations at the scene. As there were no contingency plans in place, the police withdrew from the confrontation and the House of Assembly session was cancelled. The key findings of the report, number one, planning should have commenced earlier and it should have included a detailed threat assessment that enabled commanders to plan effectively and to generate appropriate and proportionate tactical plans and contingencies. Number two, appropriate protester and stakeholder engagement strategies need to be adopted by the BPS for all issues that may potentially result in protest. And number three, the ability of the BPS to exert effective command in potentially confrontational public order operations is limited by a lack of exposure to this type of incident and the availability of appropriate command training. 
Now, while there are 10 recommendations, they can be grouped into three categories and summarized as follows. Number one is about planning and record keeping. And the recommendation is to establish an appropriate planning process for all public order events that include strategies, command, uh, command structures, and appropriate contingency plans. This includes a review of the use of threat and risk assessments to assist with planning for public order and public safety events. It also includes establishing clear guidance regarding record keeping and policy logs that are to be maintained throughout the planning and implementation of public order operations as well as to provide an audit process. Category two is command, training and tactics. The recommendations are to establish the number of public order commanders required for the BPS to maintain command resilience and to deliver public order command training to those officers who are likely to be placed in command positions. This includes delivering appropriate tactical training to the, P, the PSU and other appropriate personnel. It also includes investing in protest liaison training and ensure that a no surprises communication strategy is adopted for future public order events. And category three is legislation and the recommendation is to consider lobbying for additional appropriate legislation to assist in the management of protest and to fill existing legislative gaps. Over time, the absence of public order incidents combined with the significant rise in gun and gang crime has meant that the BPS focused its limited training resources towards firearm command, forensic capability, and the investigation of serious crime. This has created a gap in our public order training that we clearly recognize and we are moving swiftly to close. I welcome the findings of this report and I accept each of its recommendations, all of which are currently in progress. We adopted a no surprises approach on the 3rd and 10th of February and we shared our plans in advance for policing the House of Assembly sessions. Public order training for commanders, the PSU and liaison officers will be held in Bermuda between the 3rd and the 13th of April. We are updating our public order policy to standardize the planning process and to provide record keeping guidelines. We will also make recommendations to the Minister of National Security to consider legislative amendments that are in line with modern public order considerations. And finally, I invite further discussion of this report with relevant political, labor, and organizational leaders so that we can better manage protests in Bermuda to ensure that they are both peaceful and lawful in nature. Thank you. Good afternoon. How are you? Um, my first question, if protesters were informed multiple times that they were breaking the law by obstructing <coughs> the entrance to the House of Assembly, um, why did it escalate to police using pepper spray indiscriminately versus them just being handcuffed and arrested? Well, police officers did not use pepper spray indiscriminately. Those officers that felt threatened by protesters used pepper spray to defend themselves, that's that's why they that's why they carry it. Um, but your question is, why did it escalate? And I think part of it was, quite frankly, we expected compliance. That was our experience in the past, and we did not expect uh, that protesters would continue to block the gates. We actually thought that they would uh, remove themselves from the gate. And while the protest uh, would have taken place, we did expect that they would open the gates and allow the members of parliament access. Intelligence is brought up in the report as being lacking the night before that people were being warned by officers that there was a possibility, but they were um, it was ignored or, or not taken seriously. Have you taken any steps to improve that? Well, I think I, I don't think the intelligence was ignored. I think what we recognise is that there wasn't a swift mechanism to action intelligence that came in quite late at night. It was close to midnight when we received it. Um, 
There wasn't a swift mechanism to turn that around in time for 8 o'clock in the morning. But the other thing is that the intelligence was about uh, more people showing up. We were aware of that. And we wrongly anticipated that more people would show up to block the actual doors to the House of Assembly. That had, had been our experience back in March. That's what we expected. That's what we prepared for. That's not what happened. It was actually the gates that were blocked. And by the time uh, we became alive to that, the numbers were already too big for us to cope with. Yeah, I think that's part of it. I mean, we, we've had to focus over the last seven years on, on the escalation of gang and gun violence, and that, that focus has meant that our training has gone into the tactical aspect of firearms response, the command aspect of firearms response, along with improving our forensic capabilities and um, in, in pouring training into that area, we've not put as much training into the public order area. So part of it is we've had a, a, a different operational focus, but part of that is because we've had an absence of public order incidents. We, we haven't had process of that scale where any confrontation has been an issue. We've had large scale protests, but that's been a case of managing people and traffic and making sure that they don't trip over each other. So police were unprepared for this kind of protest because it hasn't happened in such a long period of time? Yeah, I think that's part of it. Uh, so that 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 so Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. Um, yeah, are you finished? <coughs> I'm going to take a break, go ahead. Okay, I, I read the report briefly, and um, I was... Um, I didn't have much time to read it thoroughly, but three things sort of jump out at me. The first is there was a lack of proper documentation of decisions made, when they were made, why they were made, etc., and on the day. Is that correct? That's, that's one of the findings in the report, yes. Okay. Um, it begs a question. I mean, this is fundamental to policing, isn't it? You mm -hmm. arrest somebody, you search a space, you take a look. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, um, Sorry, did you want me to answer that, or you? Just did. I was just confirming that's fundamental. Please. No, sorry, I thought you were still setting your question up. the 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 report doesn't say there was an absence of record keeping. The report makes recommendations for more records that should be kept. But it's saying there wasn't enough records. There wasn't enough. Yeah, that's what they said. Um, the third thing that occurred to me is that the second thing is that the. Um, <clears throat> I think on the day itself, there were some senior commanders who were questioning the tactic, and they weren't listened to. Is that an accurate um, representation of what the report says? No, what the report says is that there was one of the commanders who expressed a view about the bubble tactic yes. and said that it would not be effective. Um, we accept that. We, we know that happened. The, the, the issue is... Um, there were no other alternatives on the table at the time. So while it was accepted that this was a view, there, there, wasn't, there didn't appear to be a viable alternative at the time. Okay, well, this, the bubble tactic, according to the report, was unlikely to succeed anyway. And they, you yes. Know, they clearly say it was highly unlikely to succeed. Yes. Um, I guess when you put those three things together, this is a major failure of the command of the police, isn't it? No, I don't think it's a major failure. I think what the report highlights is that we uh, would be well served by more expanded training. We do have officers that are trained in public order. We clearly don't have enough. We haven't needed them prior to this, and we've had to give way to other pressing training needs. So what the report highlights is that we need to bring our public order response up to par with, say, our firearms response. And on the day in December, we weren't there. And as a result of not being there, um, everything that perhaps should have been obvious to us was not obvious because we didn't have the level of training that we needed to have. 
Well, it's more than training, though, isn't it, Commissioner? I mean, you didn't listen to your senior officers on the ground, um, failed to act on intelligence, um, used a tactic that was unlikely to succeed. Yeah, no, I, I don't. And, I don't. And the end result was people yeah, got hurt. But I don't agree with the first three it's things really you said. More okay, we're not here to debate the report. I'm here to answer questions. I don't agree with the first three things that you said. We didn't fail to act on intelligence, um, and we didn't ignore uh, a senior officer's instruction. These, that's not what the report says. You did, you did use a tactic that was unlikely to succeed. That's what the report says. Yes, we did. All right, I guess my question is, why don't you, as a person in charge, where does the buck stop? I mean, we talk about accountability in this country all the time. You know, what, what, what's your position in terms of resigning a position of the citizen that could actually have hurt more people, um, you know, and, 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 you know, resulted in serious injury because the wrong tactic was, you know, this, this report can't be... What, what, is, what is your question? This, this is a narrative. What, what is your resign? question? Resign as commissioner? Yeah, resign as I don't think that's warranted, quite frankly, because I don't think it's warranted. We have any other questions to do with the actual independent peer review report at this time? Uh, the review mentions very little about people actually being pepper sprayed. Um, you know, it's caused a lot of outrage in the community, as mm -hmm. you know. Will there be any means of remediation for those who were harmed on that day or an apology from? Officer, you'll, you'll recall that this matter has been referred to the Police Complaints Authority in accordance with the Police Complaint, Complaints Authority Act, and we have to wait for their assessment and their decision. Commissioner, sorry, you want a question? Can I get, in, yeah, go ahead. Um, in the report, um, there's reference to a gold, a silver, and a bronze commander. Are we in a position where we can identify who those individuals are? No, I don't, see, I don't think that's necessary. Um, the operational order that we released under a party request redacted that information. Yeah. That information or, or that decision has been appealed, and that's going through the appeal process right now. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, um, you, you said earlier during your answer to a question that officers did not use pepper spray indiscriminately. There's an investigation going on now. Isn't that prejudging the investigation? No, I have a separate role to play from the Police Complaints Authority. I have to review the use of force, and I have to decide whether or not the use of force is in compliance with our uh, policies on the use of force. I've done that. I've answered this question previously, and that's what I said. I said I've reviewed it, and it doesn't give me uh, uh, cause to take any action, not, not the information that I've seen. So you're open to change your mind if the investigation show otherwise? Always open to change my mind. Thank you very much. Unless final question from Paul. Um, you said you <coughs> accept uh, each of the recommendations of the report. I'm wondering if there's anything that the report got wrong. I'm pausing just to make sure I think this through, um, and I, I think the answer is no. I, I, I think the I, I think it's a fair reflection of of what we did and why we did it, and it's uh, perfectly acceptable recommendations of what we need to do differently next time.